yeah. good evening to everybody. Thank you very much for joining today's session. And uh, Dr. Manisha Pascual is going to do the today's session. And uh, thank you very much for uh, accepting. I also wanted to thank the uh, Dr. Professor Naziva uh, to coordinate in that on behalf of the Staff Development Center. And, uh, and uh, on behalf of the, the whole blended learning committee, I'll welcome all the participants. We will record the session and we'll make it available offline also others to watch online. Uh, uh, so over to you, uh, Manisha, so you can start now. Thank you so much. Uh, it's an honor to be uh, here. So what I'm doing is actually, uh, when we talk about active learning in the blended learning mode, I must insist that I'm not going to talk much about the history of it, rather talk to you about the reality of teaching and how we're going to create an active audience, an active participation. And that means that you, my, the participants of this Zoom session, will also have to do some active learning yourself because my style of teaching is I get you and join with you to do these active learning sessions. And the blended learning mode that uh, we will practice is true that we will we are forced to do it in a virtual format, but I'm hoping that someday in the near future, we will be able to implement this. So right now, this is my reality, right? For all of us, we are looking at a screen full of empty uh, screens with the lecturer frustrated and the student most likely half asleep. And what is the blended learning requires us to look at, in a way, the history of blended learning. And blended learning is not new. It has been in existence since 1840 when the first distance learning mode emerged. That was when, um, when uh, there was a shorthand distance learning course in 1840s. And in the 1960s and 70s, the first computer based, the Plato, that is programmed logic for uh, automated uh, teaching operation system at the University of Illinois emerged. And since then, it has gone from CD-ROMs to, I mean, LMS emerged in the 19, um, uh, 1980s. But the blended mode, especially is focusing on uh, the active learning actually emerged relatively new. So let's look at what is the blended mode. Okay. So this just a small presentation work. I hope you can hear. Yes, we can hear. Okay, okay. No, this is, I mean, it's, it's other things, but rather this is just for you to understand what is blended learning. Uh, some are saying that they cannot hear the here. I'll just double check again, okay? Uh, when you are sharing, you have to share with the uh, video yeah. on the computer. Otherwise, you know learning you somewhere. Can. Yeah, the, I know, no. Professor. Now it's okay. Now, right? let's ask ourselves, how do we differentiate and individualize instruction in the classroom? Frankly, students are not engaged in lecture-style instruction. We know that small group instruction, personal learning plan, guided practice, and inquiry-based teaching all lead toward a better and deeper understanding of concepts. Unfortunately, differentiation and feedback doesn't scale without technology. So blended learning is about leveraging digital content to provide students with skills and practice. Meanwhile, the teacher focuses on depth and application of concepts to teach higher order thinking skills. So what if we can create an environment where, one, students can get individualized self-paced instruction, two, teachers 
can provide differentiated small group instruction based upon weekly or daily data. And three, schools can operate at a much lower cost per pupil, which will allow them to reallocate resources. This environment is blended learning. What are some of the blended learning models? Let's go back to the spectrum of learning environments. As we see it now, there are four models emerging. Lab rotation, class rotation, flex, and pod. So we will talk more about the flex and pod than all these uh, different rotation models uh, in a minute. But what I wanted to uh, think uh, for you to think about is how significant this this um, blended sorry blended learning mode is for us right now in this COVID era. And I also want you to keep in mind that I have not defined blended learning as yet. The, the film has, but the, the, the video that you saw has, but not me. So what is blended learning? Blended learning in a way incorporates the concept of collaborative learning, the notion of small groups, the need for online learning, which combines with the individual needs of students. So it's a, it's a good mixture of expectations. And how do we as instructors create this atmosphere? First and foremost, we have to understand that more and more, okay, this is the traditional model that we were used to. At least majority of the faculty in of arts were where you had the traditional face-to-face -face learning environment, and you had some computer mediated learning at a learning environment, but very little, maybe a few LMS power, you know, extra readings and such. But we are getting more and more into the blended mode. And as uh, Bonk and Graham, who, are, who have written about this handbook of blended learning, which is the new version is coming out this year. They talk about the need and the reality where this will be more and more incorporated. So blended learning is the future for us, or at least it appears so. And, and how do you differentiate this? Traditional learning means, according to uh, Graham, 0% content is delivered online. That was what I grew up in when I was an undergraduate. My students, after, after a while, were looking at web facilitated learning, which is around 1 to 9, 29% of the content is delivered online. Usually it's via LMS, uh, usually it's extra readings and such. But the blended mode, which I want us to do and be actively involved today and hopefully in the future, expects 30% to 79% of content delivered online. So there's a gradient of how much content is uh, delivered online. And we will talk about what types of that in a few minutes. But if it's purely online, then it's more than 80% of the content is delivered online. So what you have to understand is that blended learning in practice uh, looks at different aspects. So according to Qdrick, Lahan and Mohawk in 2009, they say that blended learn looks at concept-based learning and collaborative oriented learning. So concept-based is, well, you, you create an online learning site and there's a collaborative learning which is done on site. So each one is, is, um, is catering and is connected to each other, the self-paced e-learning and the on-site collaborative but collaborative uh, concept is collaborative learning is where it is a bit more fused, but it is predominantly virtual. There's a lot of mentoring going on, but very little about on-site uh, lectures. Rosette and Fariz, uh, Frazi, sorry, Frazi looks at uh, how uh, blended learning expects us to think about how activities are organized online or on-site where the teaching happens, where the learning happens, if it's on-site or online or is in a combination, and what sort of content is online and what sort of content is in, in the on-site mode. Of course, 
I will not um, focus too much on those three examples given. What I'll do is we'll talk about how you can, well, it's afternoon, so how we can prevent you from falling asleep. And this is a technique I use when I have face-to-face -face lectures as well as when I do uh, meet my students um, uh, in a in a face-to-face -face environment. I will place you all, I hope we have enough people, uh, into breakout rooms. And three minutes of nonstop writing is what we need and whiteboard is useful. You can do any of those things. And the idea is, did you understand my introduction? What did I say? Were you listening? What uh, Do you want to look at anything more? So just write for three minutes in silence. And in exactly three minutes, read the definition out loud to each other and comment on what is different and missing or similar of from what within your breakout groups. Discuss how to define the term together and prepare to present the whole uh, to the whole group. Now, don't worry, I won't ask you to do the presentation part, but is it possible for us to um, do a breakout session? Uh, is that possible, Professor? I don't have access to it. Uh, you can, you are co-host, you can, uh, but uh, breakout rooms, yes. I don't think do. we can. Uh, okay, we can do. And I don't many, have that option. Rooms? How many rooms do you want to create? Right now we have a 31 part. Um, let's let's take about 10. Uh, 10. Uh, 10. Okay. 10 breakout yeah. rooms, but not include me. <laughs> okay. Uh, not include me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, so the uh, yeah. remember what I what I need. Yeah. What is blended learning? That's what I just want you to look. You can check your phones. You can check the, uh, but use the whiteboard. And what needs to be done is to see whether you understood even just 10 words of what was discussed up till now. And as I said, if it was with students, I'd ask them to prepare for the present for the whole group. But since it is not, and we, are, we have a time crunch, uh, we'll just do it as an activity so that you can realize how the blended mode will work um, right now. Thank you, Professor. If you can, I'd appreciate so it. I'll I don't have access to this. Rooms. I, I'll create now 10 rooms and put all the people into that one. Thank so you. if you go into another room, I'll take it out, okay? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Thank uh, you. Yes, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, I'll create now. I open the, all the rooms. Yeah, here yeah, goes. Yeah. I please uh, join the room. Uh, is that there, uh, Pavitra? Looks like uh, 12 people are working in rooms. If anyone has a problem of joining the room, just tell me.
Hello, Professor. Yes. Uh, so this uh, hopefully this will finish in another five minutes. Yes, yeah. we have please several more. The, well, please tell me the time so I will close all the rooms and then the people we'll, will be back. Yeah. 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 In about four minutes' time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, some people are outside the rooms still. <laughs> Some have just joined. Yeah, I just mean, uh, I talked to a few others. Joined. Some have just yeah. joined. Uh, when the people are joining, I am putting into an row. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, right now, I think it's already too late. We'll just keep them in the main okay. section. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Shall we? We can uh, get shall, everybody. Yeah. Back. Shall I? Shall I close now? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes, please. Yes, please. Yeah. I'll say closing the rooms. Thank you. There'll be about thirty seconds more then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In the fifty-six. Yeah. In a few seconds now. I think everybody back now. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Professor. So from an active learning uh, standpoint, do an activity like this, whether it's on an online mode or in a face-to-face -face mode, will provide the lecturer with an understanding of whether that lecturer's content has been understood. Now, as I said, I won't ask you for whether you understood the definition or not. Because as I said at the very outset, I will talk about what is the definition uh, later, which is now. But this was, a, this was a tool to use to get students involved and not be so inactive in their uh, well, 
plus participation. So blended learning is a formal education program. So it it is both uh, it's an inter type of instruction. It's a type of digital delivery kind of content where the students have now this is a very crucial time, place, path, or pace. That means students have some control over some component of that online blended mode. Uh, and within that, according to Graham in 2006, uh, there are four levels of and four styles of uh, active, uh, blended mode. One is the active learning or active level of it. That is where you have blended face to face and online. That is you, you get um, and you will get this as a handout and you will get uh, the Graham's uh, article as well. The other is the course level where the blending happens, where it is um, you blend face to face with online, but there's a supportive lot of activities. You can do program level blending. So there are just different uh, types of levels of um, blending that can happen. So the variety and the availability of blended uh, modes are very interesting. But as I said, Students can control one or some of these dimensions. That is what is attractive of this blended mode to students. For example, um, the, the this was really initially started with the schools. So some of these the words have the word school rather than university, but this is true for all the university or school. If you look at time, the time restriction between coming to university at eight in the morning and going at uh, five or six in the evening will not be there when there's a blended style of learning where the students might have uh, opportunities to do extra reading or do some active work, do some discussions outside of that restrictive timeline. Some as uh, the same when it comes to the place. That is, learning is no longer restricted to the walls of the classroom. Uh, in a traditional mode, learning was absolutely in the classroom. You did some extra reading, but you came back to the classroom and did further learning. Here, with some of the activities that we are going to do with, uh, with my, the participants here, you will find that the place is um, varied. You can sit in a house and in your room and in your on a chair and be an active participant in a student learning session. The path is also, uh, it is not where it is a teacher centered learning that we, uh, when we grew up, especially at schools, was used to. Here, the teacher can be a facilitator, a, a mentor, a guide, and the students will become more an active learner in this blended mode uh, than a passive uh, recipient of knowledge. And the pace, that is the pace usually depends on the speed of the lecture, the speed of the content, the speed of the syllabus being presented every day. The pace can also be varied, you can present provide all the, like, uh, the discussion notes for students or ask them to do some extra work. And then the pace is slightly different. And the whole idea of this is that when you look at blended learning models, it's a brick and mortar, which is the classroom and the online learning. And when it comes to blended learning, there are so many, when you heard at the very start of the video, where they said there were different models of learning. So there are such fascinating models of learning and we will talk a lot more about it. So the next one and a half hours will be spent on actively getting to know some of these models. The rotational model is quite an interesting one and I will explain what they are. That is uh, station rotation, lab rotation, flip classrooms and individual rotation. The flex model, the self-blended model, the enriched virtual model are all models which provide us with models or ideas on how to incorporate the text and the, 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 the focus of our teaching into, a, into this lovely little package and then present it to the students. 
why we do this is because of the fact that not all our students are equally motivated, equally capable of learning what we call the academic Susan and non-academic Robert, which is a pedagogical idea that we have to be uh, aware that some students are very passive uh, learners. Some students are very active students who, when they come to class, they are already having read, they, are, they are, have come to a higher level engagement of learning. They are, they are, they can, it's not just, they are not, they are just memorizing. When even in the first year, they are ready to discuss, they are ready to, uh, 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 not to the level of application, but at least to explain concepts and theories. So an academic Susan will come uh, from a place where she, or she has already gained the, the insights needed to be an active thinker, an active participant in the sessions. And your role is to make sure that uh, the academic Susan goes to the theorizing, applying and theorizing level in the period, the time period you have as uh, the lecturer in that particular course or in the particular number of years. But the academic Susan can get absolutely bored with the coursework with the teaching, with the pace, with the, the fact that, that that person has to perhaps work with the non-academic Robert. Non-academic Robert comes to the university uh, with just barely above memorizing, has done the A-levels, everything, and has come to university and is good at note-taking, or maybe not even that. And it's, it's very passive learning. And you have to find a way to drag this person, prevent him from sliding back, prevent him from being stagnating, and take him to a higher level of learning. You might not be able to take non-academic Robert to the level of academic Susan, but you have to take that person to a level of explaining where the, what is expected after first year in, in the Bloom's taxonomy, what is expected of a person in the first year, that person can achieve. So academic Susan will probably get a first class or a really good GPA of 3.7 or 3.8 or even four. But you have to make sure that non-academic Robert doesn't fall back. And blended learning helps by allowing academic non-academic Susan to set the pace and keep her interested and non-academic Robert to be interested enough and has the time to gain the knowledge that is required. So in a blended learning mode, how are we going to do it? Because sometimes I feel when we're face to face with students, it's very difficult, even in a classroom, in a face-to-face -face format to get at all the students. There's so much silence and in a virtual setting, it's even worse, but there are tricks and ways of doing this and making the class interesting and making the students very, very, um, even, even the ones who are very quiet, like uh, a Robert, very involved. But with the understanding that when you create this, these, virtual uh, and blended activities, exercises, that the students are in a different settings, right? Student A is, uh, is has no, not, uh, not a great deal of insights into e-learning and um, is, is dependent on, uh, is, he needs the e-learning, but he's not usually very good at it. Uh, student B, is a novice at that, but is on campus, not dependent, but and can get alternatives. So if, when we have face-to-face -face lectures and we do intend to have blended learning uh, for some of our courses, we will have students in these four quadrants. So student C is an experienced e-learner, but distance from the university. 
and is very proficient in learning this and being an active participant. And student uh, D, I'm sorry, it's, I've forgotten student D, is highly experienced but able to learn. So can adapt and can, so you have students in all these various uh, locations and how do you put them together? How do you get them involved? One of the modes that are very, very successful is what is called a jigsaw model. Does anyone know the jigsaw model? I know I, for those who have taught at the STC, we have done this jigsaw model uh, in the classroom, but it is a blended mode. It is a blended uh, style of learning. Has any, does anyone know what the, uh, the jigsaw activity is? But it is under the rotational model, which is called flipped classroom model, that we will do this blended uh, mode of learning. So in a, in a blended, okay. Just give me one second. So there are so many different models of um, models. There's no sound here. So just look at how the, the idea of rotational model is where you station rotation, that you place the students um, who are in, in the classroom to the outside, from the outside to the classroom. Then you have uh, variations of this, uh, this model where the yeah, just give me, we'll just put this um, where what we have here is in a jigsaw activity and I will do it, do the activity but we will do it in a very fast paced manner. This usually takes maybe a day and a half because the students have to uh, do a lot of activities in a different rotation. So first and foremost, everybody's placed in a home group. You can have four people, five people in a group. So you have multiple groups. You have maybe in this case, we have um, 34 students, um, so 33. We can have people about maybe five in a group there will be one odd person out, but five in a group. And I'll give you the scenario and we can talk about how we make this. In the home group, we give them uh, an idea and then we split them up and say, we put them to the different expert groups. And after discussing at the expert groups, we come back. So this was what I was taught when we were doing, when I was doing, um, uh, when I was doing some training, and um, so we'll talk about this, this exercise and we'll see whether we understand each other on what is a jigsaw. First and foremost, I place everyone in groups of five. And I inform each group that there is a really great opportunity for, uh, uh, and I tell them you are all, um, representing organizations that want to do uh, natural um, energy resource development in Penang. And Penang is in a 50 year project uh, trying to make sure that its reliance on uh, non renewable resources of energy, uh, reducing that non renewable resources sources of energy to a, as minimum as possible. They want to develop renewable energy so that in 50 years time, they are about 80% um, of on renew renewable energy. That is different types of renewable energy. And whoever does the best bid will get that opportunity to come and work for this project. And it's a multi-million dollar, multi-billion dollar project. 
So in Penang, right now, people are using petroleum and other non-renewable energy resources for its energy, electricity and everything in between. And this is the, the, the government there uh, has presented that they have options of solar power, wind power, geothermal energy, tidal power, biofuel and hydroelectric power that is available. Now it is up to each group to decide whether they will choose what. But to do that, you can't just talk about every other example. So what we do is we say, okay, the group of five, every group will have someone specializing in solar, someone specializing in wind power, someone specializing in hydroelectric power, someone specializing in tidal power, and someone specializing in geothermal power. We want to go for biofuel. Although we can, if you want geothermal power, remove that and have biofuel, but that is up to the group to discuss. So out of these five people, you come and in the small group say, okay, we are going to talk about how we can, no, we, here are the facts. We will provide the students with some information. Like in 2020, um, in this island of Penang, this much resources are, uh, are, are needed, this much money is spent for, and, and then the projection in 50 years time, how much renewable energy uh, sources are needed or how much how much energy they need to ensure that electricity is enough and um, that those statistics are given to the student. Then uh, within the group, you decide who's going to specialize in solar, who's going to specialize in uh, hydroelectric and so on. So that is in the in-class mode. In class, I provide all this information to the students, the handouts, the basic information, everything. Then I tell them, go home and read about each of your specialized area. That either they can go home or if it's a full day session, which is what we did when we were doing this pro uh, pro uh, training, you just take out your smartphones and start reading. I was given the wind power. And you start reading about wind power and we are given, a, uh, you can give, either a couple of hours or a day to come back to your group as a specialist. But then you tell them, okay, thank you for now becoming a little bit more conversant on solar power, wind power, and each one of you. Now you go to expert groups. Expert groups are all the people, all the groups uh, that specialize in, or the individuals within groups that special, want to specialize in wind power, meet up separately. Or the people who want to do hydraulic power, meet up separately. And in that group, you have a intense and very honest discussion about how you're going to go about doing this. Now, this is not going to betray your group's uh, position because you haven't really come to a decision about what your group's uh, project pro proposed uh, uh, suggestions are for the, uh, the government of Pinan. What you do is, and say for example, as I said, I was in the wind power. So what we looked at is we looked at how, you know, we looked at the phones, we looked at uh, the laptops and we had a discussion on where's the projected, um, projection of where, where does the wind come from? Uh, is there a possibility to have wind farms on, on, the, on the beach? What about tourism? Will this, this area be, a, uh, will, the, uh, will the wind farms be a hindrance? And if there is, can we pull place the wind farms and the towers in the sea? What about erosion? What about the cost of uh, three blades versus four, four blades? What is the, so in a sense, I ended up, and this is a two years after the fact, I still remember the discussions we had, it is very much active learning, very much being an expert in this. And after the allotted time, uh, probably about two hours of discussion, 
And this can be done now in a virtual mode. I've actually done this in an entirely virtual mode, by the way. But in a, in a blended mode, you tell the students to come into class, sit in the chair, chairs, come and uh, get the knowledge that they learned in the virtual online, uh, the information they gathered, and come into the face-to-face uh, -face and have this discussion in the expert groups. And after you go back to the expert, from the expert groups, you present, you go back to home group and you present your views. You present your ideas to your home group and tell them, okay, so here's the thing. Um, this is what I learned. Um, these are my suggestions. Now each person will come from their own expert groups with their own opinions. In this home group, and you can do this in, a, in the face-to-face -face format or the virtual format. In this home group, the students are actively involved in having a discussion on which is more significant. Are we going to choose only one renewable energy source? Are we going to choose multiple? And what is the justification? And if so, what percentage? We'll also discuss if, if we are going to go for um, Say, for example, uh, hydroelectric power, how long will it take? What about the environmental concerns? The biofuel, can we use it immediately so that the, we have a backup and then go for this? And if it's hydroelectric power, is there a constant source of water? What about solar power? What about rainy seasons? Uh, and so uh, that discussion, even though everyone went to the same uh, expert group, I have found in the last two years when I did this exercise in the blended mode format, in the face-to-face -face format, in the virtual format, and as a student uh, myself when I was learning, that no two suggestions are similar. But at the end of the day, the students, and I am not someone from the sciences, but we learned and we can still recall the discussions we had two years later. Because it is active learning, it is being completely immersed in the learning. So when it comes to um, blended learning, this kind of jigsaw model, which has been around for the last 35 to 45 years, it started in the 1970s actually. Uh, and this kind of jigsaw technique you can use for any subject. And since the blended mode is there, you can make Susan and Robert both heavily involved because they, they can go in their own pace. And they can be an active passive person in the uh, expert groups. They can also gain some insights from the expert groups, come back to their home group be an active participant there, because Robert might not be able to do more than take notes and memorize for exams, but he might be an expert in uh, you know, going to websites and getting the information. Everybody has their different strengths. So everyone gets fully involved. Everyone gets, um, everyone gets, uh, the, their, uh, their, uh, their voice is heard because the home group cannot uh, make a decision without all five members, in this case there's four, but all five members actively uh, joining in into the discussion of the renewable energy. So jigsaw technique is a very good example of what is called flipped classroom model. In a flipped classroom, as that little two second uh, video showed, students are in the classroom, but some end up in a different setting and then go back to another setting. And in the different settings, the teacher plays a different role. When it comes to the introduction of the concept of, well, here's the project that you're given. I am more uh, directing them. I'm a 
giving them the guidelines i am uh, i am i am guiding them i'm very specifically guiding them but when it comes to the getting them to the uh, the different groups and when it comes to uh, their involvement in the expert group especially i am there to clarify more as a facilitator rather than a teacher then when i want to get them to do to go back to the home group i am not needed there at all i am i am there if they want me in the presentation because i tell them okay each one has to present this to the penang government so where the penang government you present it to me and you can make whatever subjects you want um into this whatever topic and of course the person who taught me was from the field of sciences and so he they to professors they preferred the sciences uh, examples but this can be done in any uh, setting another example another station rotation model is where uh, we do a, a, an interesting uh, practical application right so for example i tell you the scenario of um a woolly mammoth how there is a woolly mammoth project um in in siberia sorry this is not the one in siberia uh and this project really wants to basically there you are basically um clone the woolly mammoth just like in jurassic park clone the uh, woolly mammoth and maybe have a park found a way so, that the population grows so you show the Canada, uh, sweden so you show the uh, a video like this where you should tell them okay the this is the scientific the site map. background of Canadian Hendrik of, uh, says, evolutionary the the genome research that goes on to this so this is not entirely science fiction that that there is something going on that their people are trying to uh, clone this or are trying to see if they can resurrect the 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 sequence mapping and doing all that DNA of an Asian elephant and they, then how how this this project can um create the the possibility of um sorry possibility of a uh, um of this this um creating a zoo and then you say okay if there is a zoo how would you go about presenting this information again we are getting the students to a hypothetical situation in order to make sure that they gain and that they are able to um, what is this i got the wrong one uh, they are able to um, express their ideas but do the research themselves station rotation lab rotation all this means that each we give the students a Hello, Manisha. We can't hear you. Has Manisha been logged out of the meeting? Looks professor like, uh, looks like uh, i mean some connection problem occurred okay so she may join so in the yeah. interim period can i just um, uh, sure. make a couple of notes there sure. this uh, 
the woolly mammoth exercise is actually something that uh, in the small group uh, component of this CTHE course we do. And I saw a couple of CTHE participants also. Actually, we were fortunate. That was the time we were able to get people on site. So that was one of the few workshops we actually did on site. But with the we actually did could do the blended mode because people use the internet to search to research on the extra facts. Um, yes. Thanks. I joined in. Thank goodness. Thank you. Uh, so actually, we are going to do this activity. Okay. Hello. Yes, Hello? we can hear you. We can hear okay, you. Okay, there's another uh, sound coming. Hello? We can hear you, Manisha. I can, I can hear someone's... Uh, uh, some... Um, a disturbance, so we can hear yes, you. Yes. you ah, can okay. 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 Right. So, sorry, I have my sight. Okay. Oh. Sorry, it's from my side. Sorry. Okay, so here are the, I hope everyone can hear because I got, uh, got disconnected. So please excuse me for that. Um, yeah, I know it just shares computer sound. So then we are going to just introduce you to this. And actually I'm going to ask you all to spend the next couple of like 10, 20 minutes doing these two activities that I, I'm going to present you to, to do because rather than just do this. So these are the different rotation models that um, that I that is available. Okay, here. Manisha, you want to show with the sound uh, or without the sound? Because Take a pardon. Sound is not coming, sound is not coming is from, without the sound. I've, I've actually made uh, the computer sound is, I've actually said, okay, I'll double check and do this. I've, sorry, now we'll see. Please excuse. Models. The first is lab oh, okay. rotation. This is where teaching happens in the traditional classroom in a face-to-face -face setting. There may be some digital tools, but they're generally your traditional face-to-face -face strategies like Socratic seminar, lecture, debate, philosophical chairs, labs, etc. Then the whole class moves together to an online setting. So everybody goes from face-to-face -to, -face to online, where they may work through self-paced lessons or learning software. They might be doing some research or creating something. This can be facilitated through Schoology and seesaw. Station rotation is where students are broken up into small groups in the classroom and they rotate through different learning stations or centers. So one center might be computer-based instruction where students work through independently. Another station might be teacher-led where the teacher can offer interventions or small group instruction. And then there's oftentimes a collaborative activity station where students are engaged in hand-on hands-on deeper activities. And this can happen at all levels of instruction, elementary through high school. Again, each of the different stations can offer different advantages like collaborative projects, online learning, small group instruction, or small group work. Flip classroom is the third model. And instead of having traditional lecture in the class with homework at home for an activity, it's flipped where the learning happens at home. This might be a recorded lecture. It could be reading something or researching something. Then the students come clap to class and have interactive classroom activities that are engaging at a high level, and the teacher is there to support that learning. The flipped classroom really focuses on taking the low-end learning 
the knowledge level and comprehension and pushing that out of the classroom to home so that the higher level learnings can happen in the classroom. In-class flipped is a variation of this where it's combined with the station rotation model where some or one of the stations is actually a flipped station. So the students would watch a recording to know what to do in that station. They would learn something and then they would complete the activity either alone or with their peers in that group. Playlist is the fourth model. And on this one, each student either has their own to-do list or they make choices from a differentiated list of options. And some of those activities may be required of everybody. In this world language activity, students need to choose two of these game choices, one speaking choice and one writing choice, and there are multiple options so they can choose something that fits their style. And then there are two activities required of everybody. So the commonality between all these models. So what I want you to do, and I'm again, sorry, that um, I was, I just, I was locked out, is I want you to divide into, now we have 30 people. Uh, I will be outside, but I would like all of you to join in. And write me a new front page. Write news page on the mammoth project. The idea is that now after years of research, the Mammoth Genome Project has succeeded. They have done the cloning, they have done an artificial insemination to an artificial womb, they have done the genome editing, the gene editing, everything, and they have created a prehistoric park in Siberia. And you have been invited to that park. That is you, a journalist in your group, the journalist in your newspaper, have been um, asked to come to the park. And now you have observed the mammoth, just like in Jurassic Park with the dinosaurs. And you have to write about the wonderful or maybe frightening park. So what is the news you're going to do? So I want, uh, Professor, if you don't mind, I want everyone to, to be, to go into your groups since there are 30, uh, I think there are still 30, 29. So maybe um, seven groups for each. Okay. And seven groups for each. And I will go from one to the other just to double check if anyone needs advice. And use the whiteboard, use some format and or PowerPoint. We, are, we can share the screen. Spend 15 minutes discussing how you're going to create the front news. What is it going to be about? Just one person can decide on doing the reading on the cloning, another person can look at mammals, another person can look at why Siberia versus maybe Sri Lanka. And then another 15 minutes, so we, have, we are not pressed for time, we will be fine. Maybe another 10 minutes designing the extra news. So we are doing this class activity so that you yourself can see how much knowledge you gain from this activity. Shall we do this? Professor, can you put yeah, everyone I, into I am, I am creating four rooms. I can put all Thank the people you. into the four rooms. Okay, now Except I have created and I'm going to start now, okay? All right, thank you. It's about maximum 25 uh, minutes. Okay. Thank you.
Now it's one, two, three, four. Just show it. That's all. Um, so because we are, we have less time, and I really want to get you involved in another activity. Okay. Who was in group one? Was that the group with Tushani and myself? No, I think you were in group three. Okay, fine. Whichever group is fine. Thank you. So, yeah, <laughs> I know there is a there is a um, whole difference in terms of time. Because what I usually do is this will take uh, about a couple of hours. But can thank you so much, Group One. Can I can the Group Two show us what uh, you have done? I don't. I don't know what group we were in. It doesn't matter. Just um, whoever is ready next can do Russia? it. Yeah, please. Okay. Um, we actually wrote a page. Uh, there was a photo also. We I downloaded, but now I can't find it. Okay. <laughs> so so uh, one of the things, thank you so much. I'm not going to read everything, but uh, it looks quite detailed. Dolly the Chief and everything. Can the next group please um, present? Thank you. Group two. So this is Thank the you, Tushani. This is from group four. See? Okay. Trumpets of Mammoth. That's really nice. And yeah. Very interesting. Because it gives all the data as well, information. Thank you. Uh, last group, please. Last group. Um, did we do all this? I think not. There's one group missing, but we'll do this again. So what happens is when you do blended learning in this type of um, activity based, uh, what ends up is not only do you learn about different aspects, you have to have everybody participate. So there is no lagging behind Susan and Robert and, and know what is called free riding going on. But also what happens is that everybody can participate. Another rotation model uh, is what is called a um, fishbowl. Now, fishbowl strategy is usually where you have few people in the center and everybody else is listening in. Only the people in the center can talk and the lecturer moves around and then from time to time taps the person in the center, saying that person to leave the center and get someone from the periphery to come to the center. And then the conversation continues. So you can do a fishbowl activity uh, with with this this whole um, whole idea of um, kind of um, uh, getting this on a on a, a virtual platform as well. I am actually taking from this particular organization, but this gives a. This is an academy, but it's good. We can't hear the volume on this one. I've, uh... Content for students in the inner circle to discuss. Then create a handout for students in the outer circle, asking them to track one, the order of participants. Two, the type of participation, such as new information or elaboration. And three, the duration of each student's participation. Assign or ask for volunteers to form a circle and have the remaining students circle around them. Know that because you are putting inner circle students on the spot, it is important to have established trust so they will be comfortable sharing their thoughts. When everyone is seated, give the following guidelines. Only inner circle students will speak. Outer circle students will observe and take notes on both content and group process. 
Observers will address any issues that arise in the follow-up discussion. Explain the prompt to the inner circle and let the discussion begin. Participate in the discussion only to stimulate conversation or steer the discussion back to the prompt. After the first fishbowl discussion, facilitate a whole class discussion, requesting that students address content issues and also comment on group processes. Once complete, have students switch circles and begin a new discussion. An alternative approach to this technique is to have students form multiple small fishbowls. This can help alleviate any anxiety of students in the inner circles. So you can do this in either uh, uh, the virtual platform or in a face-to-face. -face. I, I think uh, the best is face-to-face, -face, but you provide the information required and you tell the students to be prepared using the virtual platform. So you can use this type of modeling as well. But um, you can also use films and other forms. But I think the most interesting way is the 5E model. Uh, 5E model really gets the students involved. And I, I was astonished when I did this with my students. Uh, some of the students in class were very quiet. Very, very much, I, I assume they were robots. I truly did. And I did this 5E model and they just, came out of their shells and they were fully engaged. So there were Susans anyhow who were bright and they were always uh, active participants. But the Roberts, when I gave them this activity, were astonishingly um, prepared and very active. So the idea of 5E is you start with the engage. You give them a concept, which is what I'm going to give you and you go back to your groups that you had before, you have exactly 20 minutes to come up with your recommendations. And I'm putting you all into different sectors. So I'll just explain that, okay? Engage, engage students with a challenging situation. That is the scenario I'm going to create for you, which by the way, was done in a, um, in a, a computer uh, a lecture in another university in Sri Lanka by one of my fellow participants in my blended learning course. Uh, he actually did this in a in a like the NAT setting, so you don't need uh, chairs which are all you know nicely circled and everything. You can get this done even in a in a very restricted movement uh, uh, setting, but with the access to the online information, engage with the challenging situation. Prior knowledge use of prior knowledge is essential here. Then you, you yourself, then you step back. You tell the idea, you give them the task and you step back. Then the students are asked to investigate, expand and challenge that information that you give because you are giving them an interesting um, challenge. Then you explain, but you, so I'm not the one who's explaining. You allow the students in that group to explain and discuss amongst each other. It is after that point that you are there again to guide them further. So when you go to your groups, I will be silent. I'll come and watch and exp uh, if you need any information, yes. But till about five minute mark, I will not be there to guide you. You have to be engaged. You have to explore. You have to explain to each other what you understand the challenges and how you're going to go. From there, I will elaborate further and guide you. So the teacher comes in later. The challenge is given, but teacher comes in later at the elaborate section, where you help the students apply and you give certain restrictions, you, you know, remind them things and you tell them, okay, this is it. Then you get them a chance to evaluate. That is where you, the students present maybe in this case about five, maybe two minute presentation or three minutes and the others will, peer evaluation is also there. Again, the teacher steps back. So what is the thing I'm going to give you? This is one of my colleagues ideas. I am taking, he's from Ruhuna University. So I acknowledge it and, but I'm taking his idea. So earth is 
uninhabitable. We are the, now, we can't live on planet Earth, but another planet has been found 99 years into the future. We will like, take us 99 years to go there. There is a spaceship. It has been designed. It's, the engineering part is spot on. Everything's done. You don't have to worry about space in the, in the physical space. Uh, we can accommodate everyone who has survived thus far. Humans, animals, um, if you want, plants, everything. But remember, this is a 99-year journey. Everyone who leaves planet Earth now will die in the ship, will not make it, you know, I mean, every adult who joins and goes into the ship now will not make it to the new planet, new world. So there are certain tasks assigned to you as people who are experts in your field. So I'll remove the politics side of it. I'll remove that because we are going to have one of four groups. But we are going to look at the one group is going to look at the environment. How are we going to keep the physical environment uh, within the ship, the tree? Is it going to be uh, how how we're going to create? I mean, uh, is there going to be deserts? Is there going to be rainforest? How are you going to put the environment? Are you going to keep it like a just building, or how are you going to make it more inhabitable? What is the environment going to be? in this fantastical ship that will take you and your children and make sure that your children and your grandchildren survive and go to the new earth. Another group looks at the food. Uh, what are the food you're going to create? Are you going to, um, is, now I said there's space, but it's not like planet earth size space, but there are there will be places uh, for uh, micro level, spaces i mean there are places for you to grow food but what sort of food is it going to be culturally sensitive because you know some people would need rice some people would need pasta some people would eat uh you know what uh, something else each culture has preferences how are you going to, what sort of food will you take in this food? and how are you going to make space for that is there going to be um farming or is it going to be all you know put and how how much of the earth's food are you going to keep frozen so that as soon as you land on new earth they can start farming as well what about health another group will be health health group will look at um you know 99 years in a in a box no air oh by the way i forgot to tell you this ship can take in light. That's the only thing it can take in. It can't dispose of anything. It can't remove anything. If you have dead bodies, you can't throw it out of the ship. So because it's, it's contained, you can take in light and that's all. So the air you have, the plants, the, the garbage, everything is within that ship. Then in the last group, we look at the social cultural aspect of it. There are how many cultures? Are they all going to be represented? Are you going to have separate places for different religions? Are you going to have, um, I mean, how are you going to place them? How are you going to do, make sure that people aren't uh, fighting each other? 99 years together, okay? So shall we do this activity? So you have 25 minutes from now, no, to have 20 minutes, sorry, to discuss. So my engagement is there. Group one is going to look at environment. Group two is going to look at food. Group three is health. Group four, social cultural. When you go in, look at what your group is. If not, I will remind you. But I've given you this. So start exploring. Start asking the questions. Start investigating so that you know about Earth's thing, what's going to be like in the ship. How are you going to prepare the people? How are you going to, now your job as experts is to make sure that this ship is in fully prepared to take the humans to the next new world. Um, and then 
you explain to each other and I will come back and elaborate again if needed, but I will come to each of the groups. So for 20 minutes starts now, shall we do this? Professor, can you uh, put everybody into the same groups? Yes, I'll do right now. Thank you so much. Uh, hi, I'm Piyosha. Which group are we in? Uh, sorry, uh, you are. Are you in a group? I I can. There are two people who are not in the room. So can you... can you put them into group room uh, room number one? Uh, sure. I'm putting both of them. You are. Asha, why don't you join a group? Professor, can we put uh, um, Asha, Asha, yeah, yeah. Aisha, yeah. Aisha, yes. Can you put her into a group? <laughs> 
Uh, I think she's right now in group, supposed to be in group number. Uh, she can put her in group number four or even uh, one. Request. Uh, and uh, Imesha as well. I can't put her into a room. She is not, she has not joined a room. I don't know why. Uh, and Imesha also, sir? And Imesha has gone back. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We'll see. Thank you. So it's 20 minutes, sir. Uh, so about seven minutes have gone by, six minutes have gone by. So about five minutes past six. The time sorry, I, I missed, uh, I missed two, sorry, two, sorry yeah. sir. Uh, five minutes past six, we'll get them all back. Okay, yeah, 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 sure. Thank sure. you, thank you.
Professor, uh, maybe inform them they have about 10 minutes more. Hello, I'm sorry I missed uh, what you said. Uh, no, no, I just said perhaps uh, uh, just to inform them they have 10 minutes more, sir. Uh, sure, sure, I'll do that. Yeah.
Officer, we'll have to, uh, three minutes more for them. So if you can, in about I, a I two minutes time. Them. Yes, so, please. Yeah. Uh, and about two minutes time, you can just say and end of uh, yeah. end the session. Okay, six, six, I will do that. Shall we get them to, uh, yeah, get them back to the... Yeah, I end. will now do that. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay, hi. So, shall we do this? Shall we get uh, shall we get each group to present? Two minutes, that's all. And then I'll just summarize and tell you what this blended, how we can do this in the blended mode and what, what this really does. Okay, can group number one present? Or at least show what your, what your PowerPoint or the or the presentation is thank you as i said this is a beautiful picture can you tell me what this is please yeah, because uh, is that okay i'll tell i'm pusha it's just that uh, we had to discuss about what to do with the environment so we thought that basic uh, requirements in an environment is to have oxygen 
mm-hmm. and eliminate carbon dioxide so oxygen obviously we we don't have air you said but then you know we we probably have plants and we can use synthesize oxygen utilizing uh, the plants or chlorophyll we've got or synthesize um, using newer technologies then eliminate carbon dioxide and that could be recycled for photosynthesis and also it could be recycled for synthesis of foods etc uh, so it's not going to be wasted then we'll have to produce water so one thing is like we'll have to purify or recycle water uh, uh, vapor urine or whatever the water ex- uh, remove vap- vaporize from plants or other things or actually synthesize new water water molecules then we should recycle waste in the human animal excreta and other all other waste that's inside the ship so all that should actually be recycled using technologies to produce what we really need then we need to generate heat um uh, so that uh, for that we thought solar power is the free, most freely available one then generate light also solar power was thought to be the best mode then uh, actually generating heat light uh, we will have to, uh, okay i'll come to that later on then we'll have to maintain the gravitational pull otherwise we'll all be floating inside the spaceship so we'll have to find new technologies to do it then about noise in space um, uh, we'll have to have a proper noise level for conversation and it should not be too much so there should again should be uh, insulation and other tech methods used by technology using technology then again because we are having all the um, animals you, uh, flora fauna everything with us so we will have to have different areas for all these different species with, with optimal conditions and for different activities also we will have to have different areas um, eating drinking industrial activities living sleeping etc so that was just what uh, we discussed you know overall thank you thank you so much very interesting uh next group food can someone present please hello hello no sound from them uh no sound from them uh well you can see from the uh can't unmute sir hmm? someone says uh, pavita says she can't unmute okay now can. now you oh, can all right now you can yeah right. uh lakmal would you like to i because last time also i presented better somebody else is there anybody else okay <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we named it feed the ship, but uh, some of the things that the oh he also can't unmute. Okay, um, so um, what the environment group said is going to be helpful for uh, feeding the ship as well in terms of um, you know light, uh, uh, water, and all that. So we also thought about you know whether everything can be grown. We have soil to do it, or you know we need to use technology to grow. uh we have to find ways of getting water so if you recycle water we can use that water plus from the atmosphere we should be able to get water uh then um um to we have to grow crops as well as think of dairy poultry uh use uh, technology to come up with food manufacturing food uh and then uh growing the crops will be on rotation uh and also we need to think of the diversity of the people there so it's uh you know staple food um, it's not just rice you know wheat whatever for the different gro- uh, uh, groups of people uh, we have to uh, grow the vegetables as well as this so think of the staple food plus the nutritional need uh for the current generation and the future generation work will be divided on roster uh to work on the fields uh, so called fields in the ship really for sharing what we mean by sharing is actually cooking and making the food we will have many communal kitchens uh providing different types of food to cater to the different groups of people in the ship um duty will again be on roster we have to manage what food is being made as well as waste management 
because if they are food waste, we can again take it back to uh, making compost to um, use in the agriculture, right? Or make energy, biogas, and things like that. So we have to um, look at those cycles as well. Then uh, we have to also think about because 99 years, um, a current generation, which has all the tacit knowledge about you know, agriculture, uh, how to prepare food, how to preserve food, won't be there at the end of 99 years when the ship reaches the new world. So we have to preserve seeds, we have to preserve the tacit knowledge, uh, convert it into a form that can um, last the 99 years. And also um, the generation that knew how to live in a world won't be there in 99 years when they reach the new world. So the last few years of the 99 years has to be a transition period. So um, uh, knowledge has to be recorded in terms of you know, actual agriculture in a world, not in, on a ship. Um, so how to actually prepare for fire, whatever happens all that and, and how, it, how it is to live in a world that transition also has to be recorded so that um, the whatever the generation that is alive at that stage um, can transition, learn about it, and be ready when the ship lands on the new world. Mm, very interesting. The transition one is very, very interesting. Thank you so much. Uh, next group, health. Great. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay, fine. So this is the health aspects of a 99 year journey to the new world, right? We are imagining everyone is going to be exercising in a confined space. So our solution from the health aspect is, uh, luckily we had two doctors in our group, they are going to invent some new drugs that will improve the life expectancy and quality and immunity, as well as reduce the need for excessive food intake, so we can be a little bit relaxed, we won't be eating so much. We will also look at getting new vaccines to help uh, the people to adapt to a new environment because it will be very different. We are very concerned about recycling all the health sector related waste in order to improve the efficiency of the existing resources, including things like water, so that we can help people to be clean and uh, have good wellness. Uh, mental and psychological health issues are also going to be important, so that will have to be addressed. Uh, you said we will be able to have light, so we will utilize the incoming light as a resource uh, to promote wellness, to maintain clean spaces, to give people the illusion of living in a much larger space than they are. We will also have a policy to ensure that the population rate and the ratio, so that we are equitable across cultures, is maintained when we reach the new world. And we will also have health guidelines on how to adapt the lifestyle uh, to being in a closed environment for a long time and practice uh, such methods such as yoga and meditation and so on so that the people's overall health will be in a satisfactory condition when we reach this new world. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's lovely. Final group. Group on, yeah. Sorry. Yes, mom. Yes. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Uh. So. Um. We are actually thinking of a new nation in a new planet uh, because, uh, because we are focusing on the socio-cultural environment, uh, socio-cultural elements rather. Uh, so um, since uh, what all of us uh, hope and plan for is the harmony and uh, peace among uh, people, that's the, one of the major 
requirement at the current world. So you want to uh, make it an, an ideal situation in future. So when you reach that new world, uh, we want to have a global environment since anyway, we are in the peak, uh, like we are in the process of globalization. We are looking for a one world, one nation with no geographic segregations, uh, which will help in reducing conflicts to a larger extent. So we are not talking about the religion here, uh, religion or any other uh, national differences, because that could lead to possible conflicts and we want a peaceful environment in the new world. So we are thinking of uh, making a new world order uh, where we have a shared code of ethics to regulate human behavior and a common rules and regulation system, which is common to everybody on planet. And we also think of sharing resources in a sustainable manner in a, uh, e in a equal, uh, rather equity mode, like it has to be shared based on the need uh, among the people, needs and wants, according to needs and wants. And we're looking at uh, optimum level of well-being, physical, mental, emotional, as well as social. And um, gender equality has to be maintained uh, in the new world and there, has, there should be a common language of uh, language to share ideas, thoughts and speech and a shared lifestyle, uh, which is, uh, would be a result of globalized environment. So that's what we are looking at in terms of social and cultural elements. Thank you so much. So the idea is uh, when you do this in a blended mode or when you do this activity, um, you get the students to really do the reading. If I had given students, uh, each of you five uh, articles and told you to read on health aspects, the environmental aspects of uh, earth, uh, you know, earth and something like that, it, the students would be reluctant or students might, a few Susans might be interested, but a uh, few Rod, uh, Roberts might not. So what we did was I got the students to do the reading. So I'll give an example. I, um, in one of the courses, I had to do uh, an, uh, introduce students to uh, slavery. The concept of slavery, how it happened, the, the results of it. So what we did was I gave them this the same, same technique, same idea that I presented to you. That this is um, that I gave in the 5E model. I engaged them by saying that they have to, um, that the, 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 the slaves, uh, slavery situation is there, and they are there either advocates for or against the end of slavery. And then we got the students to uh, do engage and explore what they know and then come and have online uh, LMS. Of course, those days it was predominant LMS, but LMS, they watch videos, uh, films, documentaries. And then I took the students, we got the South Af African uh, High Commissioner to join us. And we took the students to Gaul Fort, where we took them to where the slaves, it wasn't the Dutch who really physically built it. It was uh, the slaves. We have, Sri Lanka has had 15,000 slaves to, during the colonial period, Portuguese, Dutch, and the British era. So where the slaves were housed, where they, were, where they worked, what they did. And then we also, because of the South African High Commissioner, we were also able to uh, introduce students to the descendants of slaves in, who live in Sri Lanka. And uh, there are the are, are dancers, there are speeches and, and uh, kind of the rituals as well. And then we got them back in. So that is the explain and elaborate part. And then they were given a, a, a virtual presentation by a professor, American professor on African-American and African uh, traditions and, and then slavery component as well. 
Using all that, they did a presentation. Each group did a presentation, either for or against, and they were fairly, uh, I mean, it was one of the most successful because I didn't tell them to read articles. I, there were suggestions, but I didn't say, okay, you have to come having read these articles. Or I didn't tell them, okay, you, you have to um, summarize this. No, they did it themselves. They were fully engaged. It was very much a blended mode, but whether it was face-to-face -face or virtual or blended, the 5E model is perfect to get students to be actively involved. And in the actively involvement way, uh, technique, as since everybody was given different tasks, they, there, won't be a, there won't be a lot of students who have what is called free riding. They just let their friends do it because this is not, this is about, um, the, my slavery comp uh, section was about uh, like 15 hours of individual discussions that the notion lovers have say about uh, 20 hour notion hours of themselves doing the work by themselves. And I hardly had, I took them physically to places. I did the organizing of the, uh, the lectures, but they themselves did the work. So this is 5D model, jigsaw model, the poster one, the, uh, the fishbowl. All this can be done either face to face or in a virtual format. And in doing these things, you can get the students to gain technical knowledge. You can get the st students to be analytical. There is a group cohesion that is brought up. And the more, every time you send them back to the same group, there is a sense of com companionship and, and not competition, but the, the, there's a sense that we are doing something. And since I, if, if you look at the mammoth example, I didn't ask uh, anything except a front page. In the process of creating this front page, students end up learning about Siberia and the situation of the mammoth and how they went in extinct. They learn about um, cloning, if you want, from a scientific angle or from another angle. They learn about how to summarize. They learn about how to how to create, you know, synthesize. So in terms of Bloom's taxonomy, Creativity and synthesis is the highest form. And I've had second year and third year students do these activities. Of course, I change it to my area, but each one can include for your area. And the students are learning without me having to teach them in the same manner as forcing it down their, their throat. Now, the first half of my presentation where we did this, you will see it has a lot of Lot of PowerPoint uh, notes. And you'd have thought, oh my goodness, another five minutes of this. How is how are we going to handle it? But as we went further and further and you got more into the activities, you don't even realize how quickly time goes and how much knowledge the student gains in these activities rather than in these. So I did two things intentionally, which is the traditional boring, almost reading off the PowerPoint so that you understand the difference between teacher-centered learning, which is what me presenting you with these PowerPoints is about. I'm telling it's a one way street. I'm giving you the information. You are passive receivers of that information. But as we went about, you went from passive to active learner. You went from barely, you know, hopefully you were listening at the very start, to applying ideas, to theorizing about it in, in terms of, again, Bloom's taxonomy, into an area of higher learning, especially if you had if you had had time in the jigsaw activity, I would recommend you reading about the jigsaw activity because it is whether you're in the sciences, natural sciences, or social sciences, this jigsaw activity is a fun but very interesting way to get students to do active learning. 
once they do this, they are, they come, I mean, I've had students this first semester do this and they come and tell, tell me the second semester, Miss, can we do this again? And, and of course, uh, the lecturer has to be creative and think of elaborate things, but things that are in your syllabus, things that you can get the students to do the reading, get the students to do the analyzing, get the students to do the work. And, and after, they, when they come to the fourth year, they know that I don't give marks for these things. This is part of class participation. This is part of learning. And this is, part, for them, it's fun. This, I think, initially is very difficult to do with students because they don't like to be in the center. So this, uh, I have to physically do this at the very start. This is a very much about a, at the original start, you submit, the, provide the information, but get them in a physical place to do this. You can do this virtually, but you get a lot of silence. So rotation model, individual rotation model, this fishbowl is fantastic if you have face-to-face. -face. Provide the information online, face-to-face -face here. But the 5 e model, whether they do, whether the final evaluation is a peer evaluation or is assessed, is a poster. Uh, I've had students do uh, a, like, five minute documentaries uh, on what they have done and how, what they have found. I've had students do uh, posters. And if you come to my department, you'll see some of them are nicely plastered on the walls. But again, it's active learning. The lecturer works really hard here. We are not silent. We are, as you can see, when we did this activity, I came to every one of your breakout rooms. If there had been 10 breakout rooms, I would have come to every one of those breakout rooms and checked on you, given advice. And, and sometimes when it comes to my students, found out why, why some people are on mute, but you know, guided them. And after a couple of sessions like this, I don't even need to go to those rooms to double check because they're used to it. So it is, it is a good way to um, uh, do this interactively. Uh, in an active, active setting. So, for example, the thank you for creating a wonderful spaceship, and see whether you can do this activity by yourself when you do this for your students. Uh, that's it. Thank you so much. We did two and a half hours. So, uh, thanks a lot for staying on. Uh, thank you, Professor. Uh, for having me. I hope um, you have questions and I hope they are, uh, you can always email me, call me anytime, but I hope this was useful. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Manisha. And uh, uh, it's a little bit over two and a half hours, but uh, very interesting. Uh, so, I, I hope the others will contact you to find them more. And uh, uh, having said that, thanks. And uh, on behalf of the blended learning committee uh, to you and also uh, Professor Nazima coordinating and organizing this one from the Start Development Center. Okay, thank you very much and have a nice evening to all of you. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye.